All right, everybody, this is Ross. So in tonight's video, I thought I would just do another announcement. Um, just like our bare root fig tree sale, we actually have cuttings for sale of fig trees. Quite a bit of varieties. And I, what I want to do is let you guys know uh, where and how you can buy the cuttings, um, talk about some of the varieties that I have listed, talk about um, what you can expect when receiving these cuttings in the mail from me, um, just the whole rundown on this whole process so if anyone's not familiar with the sale that we do we usually have this cutting sale that we do every every year but it only lasts for really only a month or two so if you're interested in buying these cuttings it's sort of really now or never you know i um i only sell them really from the middle of uh, november till about the middle of january and it really does fluctuate and change depending on the year um, this is, I think, now my third year really selling cuttings for some sort of profit. I think maybe prior year I sold some things just just to kind of get different varieties in people's hands and whatnot. Um, but we've been doing this for a decent amount of time now, and everything always takes place here on FigBit. So those are the two mo most common questions I get. Do I have cuttings for sale? Well, it's got to be from mid-November to mid-January. If it's not during that time, the answer is no. How do you buy the cuttings? You go here on figbid.com. The link to my storefront to all the listings that I have for sale currently are listed in the description. So there's a link there you guys can go to in the description of any of my videos, which will bring you really to this page right here, which has all the things that are available. So whatever is available will be listed for sale on the website there's no need to message me individually there's also at this point no need to message me about a particular variety because basically everything that I'm going to list is already listed at this point um, so if you're interested in something and you want to find a particular variety you just got to keep checking here because this is really where it's gonna be um, there's very few if any varieties that I have left that I have not listed just yet So what you can do guys if you're you're new to this whole thing uh, Figbit is a site by the way that's run by a very good friend of mine um, a real-life friend of mine that I've met um, Many times and I've, and I've actually interviewed once on my YouTube channel at the Staten Island Fig Festival, his name's Danny Gentile. He used to be a uh, he used to be in the um, New York Police Department, and so he knows a lot about crime and he knows a lot about security and, and that kind of thing. And he just basically took it upon himself to create Figbid, which is really a safer way to buy fig cuttings than something like eBay, which is what we used to do as hobbyists. We used to go on eBay. We used to type in fig trees or fig cuttings, and you know it was just very a very difficult process because there's a lot of people out there who scam you and try to sell you cuttings that are just not legit. I would say, guys, one of the most important tips of this whole video is just know the person you're buying from. Um, it's really, really important to take the time to research the variety that you're interested in. Don't rush into this. Um, you know really rely on some of the more trusted people in the community because they're gonna have the varieties that are proven to be legitimate I could let's say buy something from somebody that's relatively new maybe they're a good person maybe they're um, you know a good seller as an example but they're not always gonna have the right variety and you can end up growing something out for a number of years to then find that it's wrong it's mislabeled and you spend all this time and money um, really buying the wrong thing when you could have just um, purchased from somebody that you know and you trust I think that's I know that's sort of uh, you could maybe interpret that in the wrong way like I'm trying to just make you guys only buy from me or something but it really is the truth you know I really pay really close attention when I'm buying something I pay really close attention to what I'm buying I don't want to waste any money um, and who I'm buying it from is so so important because the source of these fig cuttings the source of these varieties is extremely extremely important it could have the same exact name you could have two figs 
Take Virgino del Nord as an example, uh, as my favorite fig variety. You could have that variety, but from a different source, it's completely different. So it's really, really important to know not just the buyer who you're buying it from, but maybe even also who they got it from. You know, in a lot of my listings here, guys, um, I like to include, like, here's Col Noir as an example. It comes from Figus de Monde, right, or Thierry. Here's Black Portuguese that comes from Belle Claire Nursery. Did I get it originally from that person or from that place? No, but that's where it originated from somewhere down the line. And that lineage is extremely important. So Figbit, let's go back to this real quick, is that you can just browse any of the fig trees or fig cuttings or even non-related fig things that you can buy on this site. You can bid, you can buy things outright. So there's a buy it now price, there's a bidding price, and it's really just up to you what you like to do. If you're bidding, uh, my best advice really is to put in your max bid sort of relatively soon. Um, it's tough to really get in there at the last 10 seconds. And a lot of times I forget. Sometimes I actually, because I forget, I'm kind of grateful that I did forget. Um, but, you know, either you go in, in the last minute and you try to put in your max bid and outbid all these other people, or you can just say, well, this is going to be my max and just go with your max. Um, I think that's a pretty decent strategy. Um, so that's kind of what this site is really designed to do is have all these different fig cuttings that you can look at from different sellers, different varieties. You can bid on them with time left, obviously. Uh, it's all connected to your PayPal, so you're going to have to pay through a PayPal account. If you don't have PayPal, you need to get one. Connect that either to your bank account or to your credit card. It's 2020, guys. All of you should have something like that at this point. Um, what else? You have to create an account, and a lot of you guys are going to you're going to need a United States address. Um, now, there are people who have messaged me a lot from Canada and from Europe and from other places throughout the world, and they're interested in buying cuttings from me. But all of my cuttings are on this site. So there is no really buying cuttings from me unless you have a United States address. However, if you are from Canada, if you are from Europe, as an example, Fill out your uh, fill out an address, a United States address, on your profile, and then what you should do is you can message me. So there's an, also a messaging system, by the way, here, guys. So there's a whole section down here on the left. You can go to your your account here, and you can see all kinds of things like your successful listings, your unsuccessful listings, what you bought, all the invoices, by the way. So these are invoices that you need to pay if, as an example, you haven't paid just yet. This is where you'll be directed after you win an auction or if you win some cuttings, if you even just buy them outright. This is where you go right here to see the auctions that you can pay for, the invoices that you can pay for. There's also a, a messaging system here, and you can message me. You can message anybody on, the, on this particular site. And you can, um, essentially what I'm getting at is message me after you buy the cuttings, you know what you want, um, and message me your true address. So message me either your, your address in Canada, your address in Europe, and I will take the time to fill out a customs form for you to send you these varieties. However, there's a couple caveats here. One... You cannot choose many varieties. Uh, you need to choose a limited number of three. No more than three varieties per package, per shipment. The shipping cost is also more expensive. To Canada, it's at least $10. To Europe, it's at least $15 to $20. So you need to talk to me, and we need to arrange this thing beforehand if you want this to happen. If you live outside of Europe and outside of Canada... I, sorry, I can't help you. The cuttings are just too far away to ship. I don't feel comfortable shipping them. Um, you shouldn't feel comfortable receiving them. Um, it's a far distance that these things, and a, a long time that these things are going to be in the mail. So I don't personally recommend that. Also, 
whatever the rules and regulations are, the laws of your country, I don't know what they are. So you're taking that risk. You're assuming all the responsibility here. And you're the one that is going to have to uh, really just take the take the loss if indeed something does happen with your customs in your country. And let's say the cuttings get confiscated. confiscated. I can't be, especially if they're auctions and they, um, they're in such a limited amount, I can't be sending you guys multiple orders through the mail, um, especially if they've already been confiscated by customs. I mean, at that point, you should just give up. So... You know, I'm not the one here that's going to be the police of you. You're going to be the police of yourself, and you need to basically take responsibility for this. So if this is something you want, which I don't necessarily recommend, Canada has had, uh, there should absolutely be no problem with Canada, but um, definitely uh, in Europe you're taking a risk. And, um, yeah, you should know your risk. Know the risk. So there's that. Um we also sort of went over how to use the site. I guess you can, what you can do is actually go onto one of these listings as an example. You put in your bid, whatever that is. You have to first bid, let's say if the current price is eleven fifty, you then have to bid $12. So you put in a minimum bid of $12. Then it'll submit your bid and then you can put in a maximum bid. And that maximum bid is whatever it is that you feel comfortable with paying assuming you're going to have to compete with somebody else to get the uh, the cuttings at the fairest price. So that's sort of, in my mind, the beauty of bidding, at least in terms of an economic standpoint, um, is what you can do. So there are also um, things like postage. Any of the cuttings, guys, is going to cost you a standard $5 with a little bit added on as it gets heavier and heavier, the package. Um the dates are down here, and it's, it shows you how much time is left on the listing. Um, here's the photos. Sometimes I have a video with it. And then also down here at the bottom is the variety info. Some, some sellers don't even include this, and I think that's sort of a shame and a mistake. But this is really, really important to read, all of this. So this will tell you mostly what I need to know, or what you need to know as accurately as I, as I can. Now... There are some things that you need to know as well, like there's um, some videos here, like the handling instructions, so what you need to do once you actually receive the cuttings. Here's a whole video that we did. Um, these are the steps that I think I recommend that you guys should take. There is one point I want to make on this video that for a brief moment, we actually talk about, you can even seal the plastic bag. I talk about putting the cuttings in two layers of plastic. So we have a bread bag, then we put it into the Ziploc bag here, and then I zip the Ziploc bag shut. But I actually think that's sort of a mistake. What you really should do is keep the second bag open so that you are allowing some sort of air in there. You don't want an anaerobic environment. I think that has a lot to do with extending the life of your cuttings. You want to have two layers of plastic so you can keep as much moisture in the bag as possible. Um, and that, that way also you're creating two humidity domes, which I think is extremely important. But you don't want to trap all the air in there because just like out in nature, if there's no air and it's too wet, you're going to have anaerobic conditions. You're going to kill your cuttings. That's really the main point of this video, but it's really important, I think, to, to take the cuttings out of the bag when you get them, rub them off, clean them, um, maybe even individually label them. And that way, it's just a more streamlined, smoother process. Uh, we also have a whole playlist, guys. I have so many, so many videos. We're going to have actually, we may even just put out a video, depending on when this, when this video comes out. But I've got t at least 26 videos on rooting these fig cuttings, guys. Whether that's indoors, outdoors, multiple ways outdoors, um, you know, the soil, everything. You name it. So the whole process is documented. I suggest you follow this. Parafilm is extremely, extremely important. Do not skip the parafilm. You're going to need to buy some parafilm on Amazon. I have a link to it on my Amazon storefront. It's really not that expensive. And if anyone is growing fruit trees in any form, needs to have parafilm. It is extremely useful. Um, so there's that. 
Now let's go over some of the things here before I get on to the actual listings themselves that I'm going to talk about. Some of the varieties we're listing. Um, here's actually an example. We did some pruning recently and I was going to put out this video, but I'm doing this video right now in its place. But this is sort of what you can expect when you get these cuttings in the mail. Now this is sort of a very extreme case because this is my Smith tree right here. This is my, or this, the cuttings I took off of my Smith tree. And this is probably the thickest cuttings that you'll receive or you could potentially receive. Um, I would say on the other end of the spectrum, the Neruciola de Elba probably has the thinnest cuttings that you'll receive. But I'm not really trying to sell you guys anything that's thinner than a pencil thickness. Neruciola de Elba, for whatever reason, just puts out really thin growth. Um, it's just it's just a weird fig in that sense. I don't know how to really describe it because it it seems like a vigorous variety, but but the wood is just thinner than other varieties. I don't know. Go figure. I think maybe because the fruit's a bit smaller. I don't know. But the point is, is that um, I'm not gonna really sell you guys anything. This is kind of what you can expect. Is that I'm not gonna give you guys anything that's really uh, thinner than a pencil, but I'm also not gonna give you anything thicker than this whatever this thickness is here um probably like a half an inch maybe if i had a guess or maybe 0.75 inches um yeah i would say no thicker than 0.75 inches about somewhere around there and as i said smith is probably the the thickest but what i'm going to do if there's a variety like this where we have thick cuttings and thin cuttings i'm going to mix them up i've already done this by the way i spent like six to eight hours yesterday and the other night, um, pre-packaging the cuttings. So I took most of the cuttings already, and I pre-packaged them in these bread bags. So each individual bread bag has the number of cuttings that I'm sending you. So if, as an example, Smith, which I'm sending you four cuttings, you will get, as an example, two of these thick ones and two of the thin ones. Does that make sense? So you have a good mix of both thick and thin because I know people have certain preferences and I can't personally fulfill those particular requests and those particular preferences because as I said I spent six to eight hours just packaging the cuttings that wasn't even taking the cuttings which in itself took me many days um, and I'm still not even done so I probably have about a day or two left of just taking cuttings and then I have another day of of pre-packaging the cuttings as well um, the reason I pre-package them is purely for organization's sake I have them all labeled with the bread bag with the correct variety name in it with the right amount of cuttings in each bag then I have them in a larger bag as I mentioned in the other video we saw where we have them in two layers of plastic they're in the fridge they're also in boxes which are labeled um, with each variety in the boxes. So it, the whole thing's very intricate and organized, but it took me a ton of time to do this. So individual requests, I just cannot fulfill. I know some people are probably gonna ask about that in the future, but it's just not something I can do uh, with the sheer amount of time and the sheer amount of cuttings I already have prepackaged. It's, uh, it's kind of insane. Um, but this is kind of what you'll expect from me is that you know this thickness, also three to four nodes, um, you know, sometimes I may even send you guys, depending on the listing, uh, an extra cutting, um, that has happened. I, I noticed on some of the, some of the listings here, I do have a whole just crazy list of every single variety with the amount of sets of cuttings I have plus how many cuttings I'm sending. So this is a giant, crazy accounting master list of two pages that's going to get even longer because I didn't even prune. Again, I have like a day or two more of pruning left, but um, yeah, the, the whole thing really is insane. And uh, what I would say also is that um, these cuttings obviously have been cut pretty fresh. I mean, you're not going to get much fresher than this. Also, uh, unless I prune them the day of, which is pretty much impossible for the sheer amount of cuttings I have. But the point is, is that um, these all have plenty of moisture in them. They're stored really well in my fridge. Um, if you have complaints or comments or questions, you know, 
message me after you guys receive them. I'm sure we can uh, figure something out. But for the most part, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these cuttings. Uh, well, not for the most part. There is nothing wrong with these cuttings. And it, at this point, it's really up to you guys to um, to do the rooting process. You know, There's not much more that I can really do. This is probably some of the best cutting quality I've offered you guys. Um, not everything is as perfectly lignified as I would hope. The, um, the potted trees are basically perfectly lignified. Um, even some of them are in that shriveled state, which I think is the next level of lignification. Um, but for the most part, if it's like super green, I'm not even selling it. So it's got to be mostly brown or either half brown, half green for me to even sell it. Um, not that I think there's anything wrong with green cuttings as long as they're hardened. Um, there is a debate. People have this theory that the more lignified they are, uh, the better off and easier it'll be. So in the debate also between the thicker cuttings and the thinner cuttings, um, the reason why I'm offering you guys both is because actually I believe that the thicker cuttings have the most amount of energy in them. Um, and I actually think you'll have the most success rooting them. So they will take a bit longer to root. Don't get me wrong. Um, so the thicker it is, usually the more moisture you need to have in the soil. Um, they're a lot more difficult to rot. So these thinner cuttings here that I'm showing you guys, the pencil thickness ones, they're very easy to rot. They're very easy to dry out. So, but people love them because they're easier to root. But in all honesty, if you just get some rooting hormone and apply it to these thicker cuttings, um, you're going to have a ridiculously sized tree by the end of your rooting. Um, it's insane how much energy actually is in some of these larger, thicker cuttings. I know the higher points on the tree usually have more energy in them. Um, however, the amount of carbohydrates that's been stored in that wood, that really thick stuff, is incredible. And it, historically, out of all the rooting I've done, the thicker the cutting, usually the more successful it was. Um, with a few exceptions here and there. But I would argue that right there is really the best bang for your buck, personally. Especially if you get some real, I'm not selling you guys really much of any two year old wood, but if you have a like the thickest one year old wood possible and you were to put that in some soil that's consistently moist or consistently wet, I'm telling you it's going to be insane how big your tree is going to be um, by the by the end of the rooting process. It's insane. Um, so you know I don't want to make sure I want to make sure just with that little point there is that people are not afraid of these larger, thicker cuttings. If anything, I think they're actually better than these thinner cuttings. Now the thinner ones have other purposes and I think they're definitely better than gra for grafting purposes. So if you're going to be doing some grafting and that's kind of why I wanted to mix them together here and not just give you thin ones or not just give you thick ones is simply because I don't know what your purposes are. Are you rooting them? Are you grafting them? But definitely the uh, the thinner ones there are better for grafting, um, as you can just make cuts easier with your knife, and it fits the obviously the graft union a lot better if it's a thinner cutting. So that's the main message there. And this is actually a cutting that I'm not selling because it's so thick. Sometimes there is a limit, guys. And this, as an example, if you stuck that right in the ground, if you did some outdoor rooting, I mean, you'd have a giant tree by the end of the summer. Um, those really thick cuttings are probably so perfect actually for long-term storage in your fridge and also um, doing really well in an outdoor rooting environment. Because again, they just don't dry out as easy and they don't rot as easy. So, you know, I think those thicker cuttings have so many advantages that people are so afraid of all this that it doesn't make any sense. Um, you don't really need any rooting hormone, even for the thick ones, but certainly could help because that's really where the thicker ones struggle a bit is actually just putting out some roots. Um, but yeah, so that's the main message is there, I think, of what you will receive in the mail um, from me. Now, on to some of these actual listings here, guys. Um, here's actually some of the listings we have active. 
Um, things like the standards that I really, really recommend are, you know, things like Black Madeira and Azores Dark. You know, some of the things we've been selling for a couple of years now, like Smith, Italian 258, Cavalieri. You know, we've got all kinds of things that I really do highly recommend. Some of the ones that are not just more experimental and I have higher hopes for. Um, or have a higher, a bigger name to them, but also things like Teramo and, you know, Villa de Bordeaux, Sultane, Varvalone. You know, these are figs, LSU Huye, that just are standards. You know, these are really just the classic, really highly performing figs that are just not going to break the bank. And I'm offering them to you guys at such a high quantity that the way I'm seeing this on some of these listings here, guys, is like if I'm offering you. A listing I I basically want to be able to say this is enough for you to succeed you know what I mean this to me is what you're paying for I'm not paying you're not paying me to get five sultane trees you know what I mean you're not paying me to get six Aishia black trees I think personally where this really all makes sense to me as a buyer and as a seller is that you're paying me let's say $30 to basically guarantee success of this particular variety so that you will have at least by the end of this one tree. And that's why I'm offering you guys, especially these listings of four or five or even six cuttings, those I would say are pretty much a guarantee that you will just succeed. And if you don't, then <laughs> you know you really should practice your rooting before you even do any of this. And that's part of the rooting um, playlist that I've recommended to you guys earlier in this video you gotta really practice with some cuttings before you even start this and sp start spending all this crazy amounts of money make sure you get the rooting process down pat because some of these like Azores Dark and Moscatel Preto they're at such limited quantity that I can only offer you guys two cuttings so I'm trying to offer at the very minimum is three but there are a few varieties like Azores Dark and, and Moscatel Preto that there's only two. So if you're going to be buying something like this, you know, there is no, I'm not offering you some sort of guarantee that says if you fail, then I'm going to have to get you more cuttings. You know what I mean? This is all, this is all on you guys at this point. So understand, um, I guess that part of it. And that's, really my thinking behind this was to offer you really as many cuttings as I could even if that was somewhat sacrificing the amount of listings I have um, I just really don't recommend the whole thought process behind buying one cutting of each variety um, unless of course you're doing some grafting you know these usually these two uh, two cutting listings like Cavalieri here and and Azores Dark, you know, you're gonna have good success grafting those, but if you're gonna root one, you're gonna probably get one out of two. But that's only if you're experienced like myself. You know, I would say probably I estimate some around a 75% success rate uh, with the cuttings I've been rooting over the last many years it has been now. So if you have a 75% success rate, I think really that's pretty darn good, and really all you would need is two cuttings. But if you're newer like this, and I know a lot of you guys are, you're going to want more than two cuttings. And uh, only if you're really grafting would I recommend one cutting per variety. To this day, when I order from, let's say, Harvey as an example, you have the option of ordering one cutting. I will not order one. I did that earlier, and I, I realized that was a mistake. But in more recent years, I order two cuttings now of each individual variety that I want so that I can guarantee that particular variety. That's really what this is all about. I, I want to be able to give you guys the confidence of guaranteeing these varieties. So um, I will say one other point here is that if they're listed for auction, I just tend to think that there's a lot more people that want those particular cuttings and that's why I'm offering them as an auction. But the majority of them here, I mean, there's almost three pages of varieties that you can just buy these outright. Um, so that's really up to you guys, what you want to do, how you want to play this, whatever it is. Some of these are a lot rarer than others. 
um, and I've sort of adjusted the price based off of the rarity, how good I think the fig is, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, some of the listings we have actually coming up, because I these aren't everything, unfortunately. We do have um, some listings that are coming out, let's say, uh, Friday night. Um, so Friday night, the 13th, uh, we will have all these different varieties being listed. And I'm really, really excited. This is really why I wanted to make this video, because I'm so, so excited uh, to tell you about some of the varieties and finally share with you guys some of these varieties that I've been talking about for years now. You know, um, because I planted so many of these varieties in the ground, we just have a lot more cuttings than I normally would if I was growing them in a pot. And a lot of them I have just been propagating for years to try to get really as many trees um, as I could. And finally, I feel comfortable enough with the amount of trees I have that, one, I'll just never lose the variety, but also um, I have many copies of certain specific varieties that I wanted a lot of copies of. So, you know, we have things like white Madeira that's going to be listed. That's an extremely popular fig. Um, Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, which, by the way, extremely excited about in the future. I mean, it's one of my more hopeful varieties because it's basically a better Black Madeira, if you think about it. Um, maybe not for everybody, but for people in humid climates, and shorter season climates because it's it doesn't split as often and it's earlier. It's actually quite a bit earlier. So uh, Colonel Littman's Black Cross is an incredible, incredible variety that um, I'm happy to finally have and finally have fruited. Unfortunately, the squirrels beat me to it on that one, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. All these damn squirrels got a lot of my figs this year. Um we also have White Triana. That's also one of my favorites. De La Senora Hivernenka, guys. Um, Norino or Moro de Caneva. Moro de Caneva has a bunch of names, by the way, guys. And I'm going to sell Moro de Caneva cuttings of three different names over the next two months. So just be aware of that. Um, but they are indeed Moro de Caneva, and I have not really seen any real, real differences among them. Uh, just yet <clears throat> if there is any I sort of doubt there really is any um, we also have Barile it's a really in um, a really rare Paulo Maloney fig that's I think gonna be quite flavorful um, we have Thermalito again this year Neruchiolo de Elba so Neruchiolo de Elba is like my, my second favorite fig uh, Verdino del Nord we have very few listings of that I'm going to make available because most of the Verdino del Nord I was trying to propagate last year and it's just it's just a quite a difficult variety to establish unfortunately um, it really does take some time so I would just highly recommend that um, what was I going to highly recommend I, I don't know but the, the point is is that I don't have many of those you know available so I said I wasn't even going to have any available I said I wasn't going to have any available of some of these, but what I decided to do was actually plant a number of these trees in the ground. Um, a number of my potted trees, so my potted Verdino del Nord, my potted Rosalino, my potted Paradiso Ciro, my potted Enrichiolo de Elba, my potted De La Senora Hivernenca. So as I basically planted them in the ground, I was able to take a lot more cuttings that way because we cut them all back, as I said, to 6 to 12 inches, right? So I had a lot more cuttings available, but I'm going to be rooting an entire bin of Verdino del Nord. You know, this is like a fig that I really, really want in much higher quantity, and I'm just struggling to get some of that established, unfortunately. Uh, it really does take some time. It's quite a shame, but the the point is is that these are some of the my favorite, tastiest varieties, and I'm finally having them offered to you guys. Um, instead of them just being, you know, everyone asking, well, where can I get them? Where can I get them? You know, I think that's really awesome. And, you know, maybe the prices on some of these will be really high this year, but, uh, next year I'm going to have a ton of cuttings from a lot of these varieties and the prices are going to go way down just due to supply. Um, that's really just been my goal is to have a number of varieties that you guys can grow 
in a couple different different climates um that are just so amazing that you got to have them you got to try them you know there's some um on this list for sure that i think are really really well worth growing um so yeah they everything in here has been listed guys i could go on and on about some of these varieties we even have i think some hated the argentile listed here dell's ermitons del sinwami gran so if you're waiting for some of these to be listed just be a little patient um they'll be listed some of them friday night and they're going to end on wednesday night um and then others will be listed sunday night and then end the following sunday night and that's sort of what we're going to do is we're going to have multiple auctions this year um, some ending on sunday and some ending on wednesday so if you're interested those are the two days of the week again guys thank you for watching this thank you guys here for supporting me if you're you know this is something obviously that i think is great that i can give back to you guys for um for all the support and yeah check out the link guys it's in the description i know someone's gonna ask um and we will see everybody soon all right Take care, guys, and uh, I hope everybody has um, a nice ho upcoming holiday season with Thanksgiving, and um, we'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care.